It's great to spend the end of our work weeks together. Uh, my name is Erica Hanchek. I'm the Government Affairs Director at FACT, and it's really great to be able to dive into the headlines and into the dark world of financial secrecy. Um, we can go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, so let me tell you first a little bit about the FACT Coalition. The FACT Coalition is a coalition of 100 state, national, and international organizations committed to combating the harmful impacts of corrupt financial practices. I describe this as the offshore financial folks uh, looking for reforms in the offshore financial sector to combat money laundering and to counter the use of offshore tax havens by multinational companies to avoid taxes they would otherwise be required to pay. Um, this puts us in a, basic, uh, in a basic thesis that the United States has a unique and singular role in helping to combat illicit financial flows. Um, in particular, first of all, because we are the world's largest economy, um, but also because the United States is one of the worst offenders when it comes to financial secrecy. The Tax Justice Network's Financial Secrecy Index lists the United States as the second most secretive jurisdiction in the world, just behind the Cayman Islands. Um, that's in part because of the abuse of anonymous shell companies. In the United States, it is easier to incorporate uh, an, an anonymous shell company than it is to get a library card in all 50 states. And these companies are affiliated with uh, some of the worst of the worst when it comes to financial crimes, uh, including corruption, uh, tax evasion, human trafficking, environmental degradation, and others. And so this central thesis um, that's been brought up by other financial leaks like the Panama Papers um, is only proven by the Pandora Papers, which were released earlier this month. It was 11.9 million records from 14 offshore financial providers that implicated 330 politicians in um, illicit financial deeds. Um, there are four lessons from that for the United States. First, who is not featured in leaks is possibly as important as who is. Uh, you don't see Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk in these just because um, financial experts say that the uber rich tend to pay such low tax rates that they have less incentive to seek offshore tax havens. Part of it could also be selection bias, which uh, from the 14 offshore providers which could drive us to try to find additional financial tools to investigate. The second is that international actors are in search of financial secrecy, uh, and they are increasingly turning to the United States, uh, especially the trust industry, to hide their wealth. Um, South Dakota trusts in particular were implicated in the papers themselves. Um, there are $1 trillion in U.S. financial trusts, uh, and they're implicated in greater issues. And especially the opacity of the U.S. real estate market um, is highlighted in these papers, making them a popular asset class for those looking to hide their wealth from uh, investigators and tax authorities. Millionaire's Row is uh, a spot in Miami where, uh, where Julio Iglesias has used uh, real estate to avoid uh, Tax, taxes and others too. So definitely a huge problem. And then finally, the U.S. has a major transparency problem for enabler industries. This includes lawyers, art dealers, real estate agents that help, uh, help those seeking to hide their wealth do so um, to evade sanctions and others. Baker McKenzie was actually one of the biggest law firms implicated as part of the talks. So what can we do to solve this problem? As Jerry Maguire would say, show me the money. Um, you could also say, show me the owners behind that money. And that's what FACT is here and setting out to do. Many folks might know us for our work on um, beneficial ownership. Um, so for those that might know, there was a major piece of legislation um, passed earlier uh, this year that we'll, we'll talk about in just a minute. But the Pandora Papers are already driving major changes. I just wanted to flag that the Chilean president was already uh, implicated uh, and impeached for his relationship to, uh, the, the, uh, to the mining industry uh, improperly. Um, in London, there are implications for real estate. And then further, FATF just passed uh, important changes to beneficial ownership uh, registries um, that will be implicated internationally. And I mentioned to this Corporate Transparency Act. So thanks to a new law, um, US entities will soon have to report their true natural owner to a legal entity, um, uh, to a private directory housed at the uh, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. There's a broad coalition of groups that came in behind this and to really demonstrate the broad scope of um, those demanding uh, more transparency of the banking industry, development organizations, environmental organizations, national security, human rights, and others. So this is truly something that cuts across all industries. Now, I mentioned that the law passed earlier this year. There are three things that we still need to see out of a rulemaking that's due by January 2022. Um, we want to make sure trusts like those implicated in the Pandora Papers are included in this rulemaking. Uh, we want to make sure that the data quality of the, of the database is good by verifying the data and then making sure that especially foreign law enforcement gets access to this information. 
Likewise, we're looking at the role of real estate um, and to be able to offer more transparency. And that includes establishing a national disclosure regime to get at behind who owns the corporate entities purchasing US real estate, both in the residential and commercial markets. Um, the, the map there that you see is just to highlight how expansive this real estate problem, money laundering problem really is. And then finally, with enablers, we're looking especially at the private investment sector, um, which the FBI named as the number one vehicle for uh, money laundering uh, and sanctions evasion in a memo that was leaked last year. Um, you'll see others listed here in terms of corporate service providers and others, but there's a huge mandate now for really tackling um, the enablers and really tackling the secrecy um, that's behind the US financial system. So I welcome any thoughts that you have, any opportunities that we have to collaborate in terms of this advocacy, and I appreciate your time on this Friday night.